and Pastor Rick from Panola alongside of him. We've known him since he was knee high to a grasshopper. <laughs> we had some fun here, didn't we, Rick, in Goolwa? We established the first stronghold <laughs> against the enemy here in Middleton. And Rick and Jan used to come and pray down here and minister. So it's lovely having you all back. Anna, all the way back from Vietnam, they let you go. That's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. And all the rest of you, I know, <laughs> more frequently. Praise God. But you're in for a treat tonight. We've got Brother Moffat's going to minister to us tonight. And uh, him and his wife, Minnie, I remember 25, maybe 26 years ago it was, wasn't it, when we first met? There? 27. My God, I lose a few years. Must be my age. <laughs> I'm still feeling young. And 27 years. My God, that's a long time, mate. But um, I can remember the first time I met Moffat. It was at a uh, praise and worship event at Mount Compass. Isn't that something? on someone's farm looking over a dam and the band were playing the other side of the dam. I remember I trained up their Alsatian dog that day. <laughs> Do you want to hear some dog stories? <laughs> the, the, the German Shepherd dog tried to ch bite me. The man had a chain on it and it was a bit vicious. And uh, he didn't want anybody to share Jesus with him, this man. He's about 18 stone plus, and he thought he was safe. He had the German shepherd snarling at people with a chain about 12 foot around him. So I went to the end of the chain, and I said, does he bite, mate? As I put my hand out, he let him go, and he gave me a nip. I said, do you want to do that again? So when the dog went to bite me, I grabbed it by the bottom jaw and the tongue and just held on to it. And I said, can we talk now? So the poor old dog, I, I brought the dog with me to talk to him. And I held on to the dog's tongue and mouth for 15 minutes while I shared Jesus Christ with that man. Do you remember that fella? That <laughs> and I let the dog go and the dog was not vicious any longer. He loved me. I let him go. He loved me. <laughs> That dog was in love with me <laughs> and we got to share the gospel. And then I met Moffat and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and um, we all we ended up going together. We got, got involved, didn't we, in different things. And one was a trip to Benny Hinn over in Melbourne. We came together and this man, can I tell him a bit about you because most people would never get to hear this. <laughs> he came to study at Tabor here in Adelaide. He came by faith, not a brass razu in his pocket. This man's a man of faith. And he turned up a table and said, God sent me, and they said, sorry, how are you going to pay for this? <laughs> Is that about it? He said, I don't know, but God sent me. And he said, I'm not going. I've been sent here by God. They wanted to shoo you away, didn't they? He said, I'm not going. God sent me. He went and got a job at Mama Camella's pizza place down at Glenelg. And he was uh, some Baptist guy, wasn't it, who gave you a room at Coromandel Valley. And um, he used to walk from Coromandel Valley down to the bay, work and then walk all the way home and send his money home to start an orphanage and support his wife. You know, I, I've got to tell you, there's a price for the gospel it's free salvation is free to us but it's not free to walk in it it's there's a cost and it's a difficult walk but god takes the yoke he says it's not heavy give it to me and i'll carry you and he did and um when we went to when we went to uh, geelong i think it was we, we stayed at a caravan park in geelong in this bus that we went to Benny Hinn with, all the people from here. 
And I remember the, um, the day in that caravan park where he shared his bowl of rice with us. He had nothing. We're all piling in the Maccas and God said, he's in the bus. What about the man in the bus? I said, oh, okay. He's willing to share his bowl of rice with us. So we shouted him a Maccas and I wanted to get to know him better. And as I was going to the toilet in this caravan park, the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And he says, Rafi said, um, I want you to help Moffat. Now up until then, the Lord hadn't allowed us to take an offering at the meetings we had started. He was taking us on a faith walk. Didn't want us to tell people, didn't want us to ask people. Wanted to tell us where to go, how to do it and lead us. And he spoke to me that day and he said, I want you to start taking offerings now for this man. For the first time ever we took an offering. And there was only about 16 people, but it was thousands. It was a lot of money, wasn't it, that first offering? Was it? Is that what it was? I thought it was a lot more than that. But anyway, the Holy Spirit blessed this man and started blessing him. And, and our offerings were going into... into off its work. He started the orphanage and started building it. He's got seven brothers in the ministry all serving God. His father dedicated a lot of them to Christ. And the fruits today, still fulfilling his father's vision. Amen. How many churches started in India with the boys, your brothers? 57. And they got churches as well. So it's a multiplying work, you know. You know hey, this is good ground, okay? But I, having said that, I just want to, to welcome him because he's a good brother and a good friend and one of God's workmen. Come on, give him a big hand. Praise the Lord. This is my great joy and honor to be with you all this evening. Really, I consider it as a great privilege to stand before you and to sharing from my heart as well as from the Word of God. Really, whatever the things Pastor Raf who shared with us is really true. And we were praying to go back to India to start an orphanage. So he really heard and he connected with us and uh, he started uh, start to help. Until that time, he never take any offering at the Middleton meeting. So he said, Moffat, we will stand with you and uh, help you to start ministry in India. Actually, the first night, the first offering was yet, still I remember that's a 27 years ago, $840. So when the first seed money came to our hand, we with joy, we really cry. And we put into the God's kingdom to establish the ministry in the land of India. So last year we could celebrate the Silver Jubilee, 25 years of God goodness and greatness for Harvest Ministries how much God led us through all the ministry. My father is a great visionary for the ministry which we started, Harvest Ministries. So we start with an orphanage, then Bible college, public school for unmerited children from kindergarten to high school. Then we have the hospital, we have vocational training center, and we are having food bank, just collecting food and distributing to the needy every month. We just are distributing to 300, sorry, 230 people. And also we have a, a community kitchen. We cook the food and the serving the needy, the hungry people. And also we have a lot of charity work. We helping the widows and uh, giving educational support and medical support. This all the work last 25 years of God faithfulness. The fruitfulness is really 
came out of harvest ministries and also we could establish 67 churches in northern part of India. Bible says my righteous shall live by faith. Actually you may think of as an Indian, I may learn how to live by faith in India. No, when I came to this country, really I start to live by faith. So when I came to Tabor College and uh, I, was, I came for study, I only I know when I came out of India, first time I'm going overseas. And uh, Pastor Richard, he being there two, two time in India, he know what I'm speaking and how we pioneered this all the work and uh, out of nothing we established this all those things within 25 years. And uh, when I came out of India, I do not know, only I know I'm going to Adelaide at Tabor College to study the Word of God. I didn't think where I'm going to stay and whom I'm going to, by whom I'm going to get support, nothing. So when I went to that residence, my uh, principal asked me, how are you going to pay all your fees and uh, your accommodation and food? And they offered me small and large and medium room. That time, smaller room, $90 with the food for a week. And uh, I, I said, is there is a smaller than small, can I have it? Because I don't have any money at present. That time he came to know my financial situation. And he started counseling me more than one week. And the end of the week, he said, Moffat, you are in a wrong place. You better to go back to India. If you want to do study, you can do by correspondence. I said to my principal, I am here like Abraham. God spoke to Abraham, you go where I am showing the land. He did not know where he was going. He stepped out the journey and he walked by faith. God began to prosper. The same way, Lord taught me how to live by faith in the land of Australia. That's a, a lesson I'm put into practice in India and the last 25 years. And now, our Indian government is very funny with the, all the Christian and Muslim. You know, now the four corners of India, the Hindu people blowing the trumpet and they're declaring in the middle part of India, this month, the 19th, they're going to declare India is the only country for Hindu people. No more Muslim. So they start to kicking out, chasing out all the people, go to the village and uh, checking them. Are you Christian? If they say yes, then the first option, you have to reconvert and come back to home. If not, they will kick out. Already from last month, from two, three villages, 2,500 Christian people, they kick out from their home and village. They have no house. They're just now homeless because sake of the faith. And the Indian government going to kick out all the people, even last year, 2022, 1,980 people being killed by the Hindu fanatic, included pastors. And the persecution is very big. We do not know what's going to happen. We are preparing, we know God is in control. The God going to send the revival in the land of India. The people of India are going to see the power of God in the land of India. You know, they tried to persecute, you know. In 2009, there was a missionary from Melbourne who came to India. Around 35 years, he was working among the leprosy people. One night, he went out for public outreach ministry in the remote, very remote village. He couldn't get any place to sleep. He was sleeping in the van with the two children, seven years and nine years old boys, Timothy and Philip. Midnight, the Hindu fanatic people came and poured the petrol on the vehicle. They fired it up. Three of them burned alive. Straight after, three months later, the same district, they got a big cyclone. Around 30,000 people died. And all the Hindu people said sorry to Christian. They said, we know why it's happened. We acknowledge the power of God because of the persecuting, killing pastors, missionaries, and Christians. That's where God's wrath came upon us. 
really acknowledge and after that we christian people got a great opportunity to show the love of god making shelter medicine food and uh, after that in those villages many thousands of people came to the lord hallelujah god is still on the throne he is working and uh, he is an unchanging god he never leave us alone as david says even though i walk through the valley of shadow of death i will not fear any evil you are with me even in the uh, dangerable situation hallelujah our god is a god who always with us he never leave us we you know we are serving the lord because uh, yeah most of the friends who are here right now you heard me and even i had a personal attack by the hindu militant people twice they burned down my house and uh, they fully damaged i had a first call from our beloved pastor rapsho he said mofat you nothing to worry whatever the devil made a damage in your home we will stand with you and we will build up really my heart was overflowing how much he saw the love to rebuild the house and to make it again to live in the land of india then after that one month later i came to adelaide due to my mission trip one night i couldn't get any sleep early in the morning i got up and called my wife asked her what's going on she said everything is all right i keep on calling that time when i called she took the phone and went to the bathroom she said house full of media people police so they making report the hindu fanatic people came inside the home and beaten all my brother laws my mother law and even my children they were screaming and crying that time my wife was in the bathroom and she was calling the police when police came everyone ran away just the police got only one person finally they came to know who did everything and uh, because it is a religious issue and uh, they did not just uh, put any news everything and they just hold it and uh, when i was speaking to my wife i heard my son was crying he was only 9 years old now he is 22 i said to my wife give phone to my son let i want to talk to him and my son said daddy we cannot leave any more this place these people will kill us we want to go somewhere else i said to my son no way to run away from this place we need to stay back and make shame to the enemy i said look into the life of king david how many people how many kings they just followed him threatened him to try to kill kill him nobody couldn't touch his life until all the plan of god promise of god to fulfill through his life then only he could die the same way our life is in god's hand and uh, he never allow the devil to attack and kill us so maybe they will can disturb us in many ways so we are in the hand of god hallelujah so even though my son he was 9 years old he couldn't take it that time then after that when he go to school coming back from the school he stood at to the gate he, he don't want to enter the house the reason because of the fear and it took nearly 7 5 to 7 months to adjust with the atmosphere but anyway by the grace of god now we move from that place and now we are living in the mission hallelujah god is so good and god is really working and we are just on the process of the next level so last year we could celebrate the silver jubilee celebration and all the things what the lord has done but now the hindu government trying to stop all the foreign money to come in not only for our ministry even all over the ministry in india the people are not able to do anything and the reason the hindu government think we bring foreign money and uh, giving to the poor people and converting many people from the land of india they want to stop the conver- uh, conversion that's the reason they stop and from last year 2020 to april we really struggling to run the ministry we cut it down all the expenses even for the staff salary also we cut it down and told staff okay once we the same account uh, get it back then we will pay rest of the money whatever the things you are uh, cutting off from your salaries 
so that way they are adjusting with us and uh, and uh, personally i cannot receive even through my ministry i cannot receive and what i we are doing for uh, uh, just running the ministry very small amount of money from the, those who are individually supporting we ask them to send by western union not in my name or ministry name we used to give some of our staff name or pastor's name so they sent to them and when they and they bring it as their donation to our ministry so that we just last nine ten months we are really running the ministry uh, with a very difficult situation and uh, anyway i know we are we will come out come out of this valley situation so very often we go to the valley you know when if there is a one mountain there will be a valley then from that valley we need to dig the ditches in the valley that was uh, second king chapter 3 verse 16 says to king uh, hezekiah and they were going against to uh, uh, fight with the three nations but he was a little bit afraid finally as they having journey with all the soldiers and they have no water to drink and uh, they are searching for the prophet finally they find a prophet and uh, he came to know this person, and uh, elisha said bring the musician when the musician came and playing the music the power of god came upon the prophet elisha and he start to prophesy dig the ditches in the valley you will not see the rain or wind but the, all the ditches going to fill with water you and your cattle and uh, your soldiers going to drink and you are going forth and fight with the enemies hallelujah the same way we need to obey and this is the time we are in the valley we are digging uh, the ditches in the valley we know very soon the lord is going to fill the place and uh, we are going to go to the next level hallelujah we are going to occupy the next mountain and for the glory of the lord amen hallelujah so we have to go through the valleys yeah that's a christian life christian journey don't think about the christian journey always it's a mountain life so if you are happy with one mountain you can stay for a long time there if you want to go a little more further you must get down to the valley and when you are in the valley situation no need to murmur if by faith you have to dig the ditches in the valley the lord is going to fill and you are going to drink and you are going to occupy the next mountain hallelujah hallelujah that's a christian life so we are going through this kind of situation in our christian ministry and the life god is so good Hallelujah, he's always good and he's challenging and testing our life and we are we are more than a conqueror. Actually, we all are in the battlefield all the time. We have to wear all armor of God all the time, all Christian. Amen. We must be ready to fight with the devil. We must have the sword in our hand. and when they will come to attack you and you can just take the sword and uh, we can react and attack the devil so if the word of god is in your mouth when the devil came and just uh, test and uh, attack jesus christ and he said a hey, devil satan you know huh? the man shall not live by bread alone hallelujah by the word also he lives you know that okay straight away the sword of god to cut the devil amen hallelujah that's what we in our bible college we always asking the student to memorize scripture every day and meditate the word of god so when the devil come and attack and you no need to tell to devil devil just wait let me go and take the word of god and to ready to cut no always your word of god must be in your heart hallelujah take the sword and cut the devil so we are in the front line of the battle in india you know my wife mini she's a first convert in from his her hindu family first generation i am the third generation in christianity and uh, two time she saw death face to face even last year 
because of the covid you know last three years i couldn't come to this country i didn't travel anywhere during the time some good things happen bad things also happen even my father who loves me and we loves him and he passed away last year 2001 february 22nd and my wife i had a one daughter and one son one great prophet in our uh, country he used to come to our home to pray at least once in a year two three times and in 2019 when he came to our home and my wife asked him to pray for my daughter to get right partner to arrange the marriage he prayed and said okay pastor this is what the lord show me okay this is a sign for your daughter's wedding okay the mother from kerala state father from tamil nadu okay that that is a sign to state and uh, the boy who going to get your daughter married he will be medical doctor then he said he will be preacher and he said he will be musician worship leader so they find out our resume through we have a, like a matrimonial site in india so in india still arrange marriage okay the parents each other they will contact okay they so our resume we saw their resume and we find out each other and we invite them to come so when they came and they said and whatever the prophecy was there all four prophecy was on that family then there was a not double check immediately we give the word and arrange the wedding so really that's a god's plan and purpose for our family even though the phys- the medical doctors but they are fully involving the ministry so the second level generation they rising up to carry on this all the work for the kingdom of god in the land of india hallelujah the day of my daughter's wedding mini had attack by the devil the reason was she was me and all we had a vaccine seven eight months back before the marriage two days later mini had a uh problem with the legs the blood was clotted because of the side effect of the vaccine out of 100 people one person get a blood clotting many people get a uh, heart problem many people get a lungs problem because side effect of the vaccine we didn't like it to take a vaccine because of the kambal if you want to go to the public to preach and do ministry you must take and you should have the certificate if you want to travel overseas or inside india you must have that's the reason we took but anyway mini she while the middle of the marriage and she had trouble and immediately we took her to the hospital nearby they give all the medical check up they find out her blood was become very thick that's why blood not running through her body immediately the hindu doctor neuro he call me and said pastor mofat there is no hope for your wife she is going to die i said to my the doctor doctor whatever the things you can do nothing going to happen why i said you know because i have the great faith there are so many pro- pro- promises to fulfill through her life that's why i believe and i said to doctor nothing going to happen to her she will come out and uh, fourth day she came out from the icu doctor said not because of the medicine because of your god hallelujah yeah. our god is a wonder working god he is still alive when she was in the icu unit there are many many people I, in icu unit there were 14 bed every day five six people are dying everybody is watching the death and the people in the fear and they think in next i am going to die so next to my wife but there was a hindu priest she does not know he is a hindu priest so he thought he look like a pastor and uh, he was screaming he had a lung cancer he was crying and screaming the lord said to my wife tell the man call upon the name of jesus 
and he started to screaming and shouting the name of jesus all day through the icu unit the next day again the lord said to my wife tell the man to call upon the name of jesus he was screaming and shouting the name of jesus and everybody could hear all the icu next day he took it out for the medical checkup and when he came after the medical checkup there is no more cancer hallelujah <laughs> completely he healed and he said to me you know who i am i am a priest of the temple in the city of trivandrum when i do all the sacrament i pouring out the ashes on the air always i sniff the ashes my lungs got damaged hallelujah our god who touched when he call upon the name of jesus the healing power came upon him and he got delivered and he is still alive hallelujah praise the lord our god is a god who can show his mercy to any religion amen hallelujah he want to show the power to turn back the people hallelujah so now the hindu government tried to persecute and kicking out the christian i know god has a plan for the land of india they cannot easily kick out and kill the people of india and he is going to show the mighty power hallelujah the man who who prophesy about the turkey and uh, uh, syria the earthquake the same man of god prophesy next earthquake going to come to the land of india i don't know how the lord is going to shake our nation even our prime minister modi in publicly he is uh, like he presented drama before the people as a pretending like a good man but he is the one who caused all the trouble to the nation of india he want to make in the nation of india is a hindu country so uh, dear friends i request all of your personal prayer regarding our land there are thousand thousand now even we established 20, uh, 67 churches only we could build three churches over there now all three churches being closed the pastors the believers they cannot go to the church but so far they did not da- made any damage just to shut the church and now secretly they worshiping in somebody else home that's a situation the people are facing they have no freedom to do the worship in the land of india so i request all of you so this is the time for the great harvest amen this is the time for the great revival we need to rise up today we had a prophecy hallelujah rise and shine the glory of the lord is going to shine upon you amen this is the time for we all of us to rise and receive the anointing of the holy spirit and we need to take the mantle and to shine in the darkness hallelujah let other people must see the glory of the lord and come to the kingdom of god hallelujah this morning we, me and my wife we are praying through the phone and mini said to me and tell to pastor raf you are a nahamaya raise and build the wall of jerusalem and with him there are hundreds of people joining with him and just a broken wall broken families going to build it up okay this is a time for we all of us to raise and just walk and do the building and banking and rebuilding the wall of jerusalem so there are so many brokenness in our community hallelujah don't think about there is enough time when jesus was telling harvest is plentiful workers are few ask the lord of the harvest to send out the workers into the harvest field then jesus said okay you are saying there are four months then come to the harvest jesus said no lift up your head see around the field the field is already white for the harvest we are naturally we are looking and saying still there are four months according to the palestinian situation but jesus said not that natural harvest see lift up your head see around the field the harvest is already white hallelujah so the harvest is already white the revival already spread out so we need to be the channel for the revival you know now what is happening in america kentucky 
hallelujah the, the revival even among the young people the prophecy is there the last days the young people will be prophesying hallelujah they are not stopping and they worshiping the lord the fire is just catching around and we need to be hallelujah same position don't think about there is a plenty time uh, for jesus to come no really the rapture is going to happen very soon be prepared that's my message tonight be prepared listen obey and be prepared hallelujah so everything need a preparation so if you want to our lord jesus to come back we need to prepare the way for him to return back hallelujah you know when jesus came to this world beforehand there was a forerunner the john the baptist he came and prepared the way for the lord jesus to come and take on and uh, on the track and doing the mighty work amen that's what that's a prophecy before john the baptist come 700 years before the prophecy was there the prophecy in the book of uh, isaiah chapter 4 book of isaiah chapter 4 so not yeah book of isaiah chapter 40 verse 3 to 5 the voice of the the voice one calling in the desert prepare the way for the lord make straight in the wilderness a might uh, wilderness and uh, highways for our god every valley shall be raised up every mountain hill made low the rough ground shall become level and the rug place a plain verse 5 and the glory of the lord will be reveal and and all mankind together will see it for the the mouth of the lord has spoken hallelujah so this prophecy being fulfilled through john the baptist and he was the forerunner he was preparing the way for the lord jesus to come and do the ministry and when he was start with the wonders and the first miracle took place in the wedding at cana you know when mary the mother of jesus she came to jesus and said son they like wine jesus said woman what concern with you with me as she was going out okay if once one day once i was preaching about this subject through tv channel i had a couple of lot of phone call and i was just a little bit criticizing mary i said mary has no role to play she is not a mediator when mary went to jesus and jesus said woman he didn't say mom mom he said woman what concern with me my hours not at come as she was going out she said to the uh, the servant whatever he says just to do it whatever he says do it and when jesus came to know the situation you know when jesus why the wine was run out the reason wherever jesus go people will rush in even people without inviting for the wedding also when the people know from the village and everyone pushing in and that's one of the main reason the wine was run out and jesus said at the door step there should be five stone jars should be there you have to fill the water in the jar whenever jesus speak jesus never use would you or please can you do this and that never always his word by commanding power jesus said fill the water without question all servant just filling the water they did not argue with jesus jesus how foolish you are you know according to jewish custom the water jar should be there to wash the feet really appreciate man of god pastor richard today he led by the spirit and uh, he he was watching somebody else 
faith. That's a really move of God. So Jesus said, fill the water. Second command, serve the water. They did not look at the water and said, Jesus, if, I, if we go and serve this water, the people will give a smash on our cheek. We don't want to do. So when they look at the water, water is still water. No change. The second command, just to obey. Then the people who are sitting at the feast, they taste the water. Water tend to become wine. Hallelujah. Why it's happened? Because of they listen God very carefully. They obey and they prepare Jesus to perform miracle. Hallelujah. So tonight, anybody else who listening me? So if you are expecting something from the Lord, you must listen carefully. And you have to prepare the Lord to perform something in your life. So preparation always needed to reveal the work of God in your life. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to change all of your thoughts and your ways and uh, uh, whatever the imagination you have. You know, when Naaman, the leper, he came to the prophet Elisha and uh, the servant girl said, okay, if you go to Jerusalem, there is a prophet and uh, he may come and lay the hand upon you and he will cast out your all the leprosy. But prophet didn't move from there. He sent the servant out and, okay, even though he's a big, very big position, everything he knew, but he said, tell to the man, go to the river Jordan, dip himself seven times, then you will heal. But first he, re and he rejected, he got angry. He said, in my country, there are good rivers, very clean water. But in this place, Jordan is a dirty water. So I don't want to go there. Then servant said, yes, master. The prophet just gave only a very simple word. Why can't you just obey? Why can't you just obey? Finally, by everybody else pushing, he just went to dip in the river Jordan. One, two, Five, six, nothing happened. Finally, he obeyed the seventh dip. And when he came out, his body like a baby's body. Hallelujah. So because of, he prepared himself to the Lord to move in his life. Hallelujah. So this is the time for we need to move ourselves. The Lord is there to move in a special way. So we need to prepare the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Lord is still on the throne. He is still working. You know, the revival is taking place. So we are living into the end time. We had a last, last January, three days conversion. One of the prophetical preacher, he said, the nations, so when you look into the world, what's going on? So when we look into the world, what's going on? We can say, Jesus is very close to the door. And he is going to return back very soon. And before the church go through the uh, persecution. And uh, the people of God is going to rapture from here. Then the third world going to happen. And the people going to attack. And they are going to kill by themselves. And so many things going to happen. So before the rapture. Hallelujah. So we need to be prepared. We need to prepare to go to heaven. You know, when disciples were, Jesus was sending 70, 72, two by two. Jesus has given them the power and authority. You go and cast out the devil, heal the sick. Okay, everyone went out and they just performed same like Jesus, what he did. They, everyone very happy. They overjoy. And they came back with a great report. And they said, Jesus, when we are in the street, when we were in the jungle and when we were preaching and casting out, the demon was fleeing and uh, run away. They were overjoyed. And Jesus said, I have seen the devils were falling down like a lightning. I have seen.
but jesus said to disciple if your name is written in the book of life rejoice hallelujah because of these miracles and signs you know need to re- rejoice only one reason we have to rejoice if your name is written in the book of life when jesus come and when you want to rapture by jesus when you want to go to heaven hallelujah your name must be written in the book of life you must be born again hallelujah if you don't have the born again experience if you're not walking with the lord you cannot enter to the heaven praise god Hallelujah that's important we need to be prepared we need to be prepared if you want to go to heaven you need to be prepared hallelujah you need to open your heart and prepare your heart to jesus and when he come and rapture the church and we can go with him hallelujah you know need to come or live on this world and struggle some people say this world is okay we are living like a king we don't we don't want to leave this world when jesus come also we are happy to hang around please leave everything this all rubbish hallelujah if you really want to go to heaven be prepared make sure your name is in the book of life hallelujah god really want you all be in the kingdom of heaven he is preparing the house is ready for you i think i shared with you maybe 7 80 years ago when my father came to my home because every month we have a turning uh, just a family prayer with uh, one after all my brothers sisters family i was turning on the christian christian channel there was a man he was preaching about how to invest money into the kingdom and he said one story about the rich man and the poor man okay we have a the story about poor man and rich man lazarus and the, the rich man that that the rich man is not born again but lazarus was a born again but in this story both are born again rich man also born again the poor man also born again and uh, when this poor man who was working with uh, the rich man he earned salary from him and when he get a salary he hardly take some money out of that for his survival and uh, he clearly give 10 percentage to the tithe to the god's kingdom and uh, he put beside some money for a uh, mission and he put beside some money for poor and needy and take care of okay that's what jesus said in as much as you did one of the least of my brother and you done for me so he did everything he invest everything into the heaven when he die this poor man he went to heaven the angel hosted him and honored him he walking through the golden street and uh, end up with a very beautiful nice bungalow in heaven and a couple of years later the rich man also die because so he born again he also went to heaven and uh, he also thank you thank you he also hosted by the angel and uh, while he was just moving the angel showed him look at the beautiful bungalow that's your servant who is living over there and uh, this rich man overjoyed he he couldn't stand on the floor he's jumping and dancing he thought okay if my servant got that much beautiful bungalow in heaven how big i am going to get he was walking and walking end of the street the angel showed him look at the small hut at the corner of the street this belongs to you the rich man got angry with the angel the angel said stop murmuring and fighting with me you know what you did when you receive the money and wealth you hardly invest something when the offering box come you put some coin but this man everything he given tithe offering mission taking care of the poor and widows and everything he invested in heaven according to his investment we could make a beautiful bungalow but you made a great name on the earth millionaires rich man but you came to heaven with the empty hand so when my father was listening the message and he given all the share to all seven children he put beside half an acre land for rest of the, his life and the holy spirit began to minister to him 
I want to have a great house in heaven. He sold property, take the money and call some of the poor pastors who are struggling to build up the church. He distribute money to all the pastors. And we really glad and we really proud of my father. He invests so many. Not only he given all seven children, he spent all time faithfully serving. He never worked for money and serve the kingdom. And uh, now he has a great hallelujah mansion in heaven. When we go to heaven, we will see where is my father. Hallelujah. Dear, dear friends, where is our heart? Is in heaven on this earth. Where is our treasury in heaven on this earth? We need to make sure everything must be heaven. When he come, we be prepared and the master to come back. And that's our responsibility. And uh, this is the time for the revival. We need to pray, Lord, move on again. Once again, what's the mean by revival? Making live again. Making alive again. That's called revival. You know, that's what is happening in America, Kentucky, and uh, the place called, which is a university, Raspberry University. There is a story about Dr. Billy Graham. When Billy Graham was studying in a Bible college in America, the Bible college set up a uh, study, mission study tour in England. They came around 52 people together came to England. So while they were going different missionaries' house and they visiting different uh, museum, so one of the museum was John Wesley. So when they visited John Wesley Museum and everybody get into the bus and ready to move from that to another place, so they counted one man, one man was missing. So they're looking for where he is. So the people were just looking around and when they look, he was in the John Wesley's museum. John Wesley was kneeled down and pray on that mat, his knee place to hold because the same place he always kneeling down and to pray. The same hall, Billy Graham was just putting his knees and he's praying, Lord, make it again. He was crying and shouting, Lord, make it again. The same kind of revival which spread it around. The Lord used me for a revival. And he was crying and he was kneeling down on the same mat. He crying to the Lord. So how many of you have that much burden? Lord, do it again. Lord, do it again. I want to, hallelujah, see the revival. I want to be the channel for the revival. Use me, O Lord. Hallelujah. We need to move by the same anointing and we need to listen carefully and we need to do something for the Lord. Okay. Revived, revived church is the only hope for the dying world. Amen. If you are a revived person, if you are a revived church, that's the only hope for the dying world. So we need to give a great hope for the dying nation of Australia. We think, okay, Australia is okay, perfect. Eh? Yeah, maybe somewhat it's look perfect. No, we need to give a hope. We need to raise up. Ask the Lord, Lord, revive me. The Bible says, First Chronicle chapter 7, verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name, Humble themselves. Okay, if you, are, if you are praying for the revival, who is my people? We are, we Christian. You think, if there is any wickedness, if there is any sinful nature in me? Hey, look into the prophet Isaiah. And when he saw the king Uzziah die, he saw Je the Lord God who was sitting on the throne high and above. And then he himself, he saw, he said, he was screaming, Lord, I am, I have an unclean tongue. I live among the unclean people. When he confessed and his filthiness and his uncleanness, uh, the angel of the Lord took a coal and coil from the altar and touched his mouth. He became a clean person. Hallelujah. So then he heard, 
Whom shall I send? Who will go for me? Prophet said, here I am. Send me a Lord. Here I am. Send me a Lord. This is what we need to do. We need to cry to the Lord. The Lord said, if my people who are called by my name humble ourselves. This is a time for all the godly people. If you are feeling I'm a perfect person, no, there's something could be there. We need to get right with the Lord. We need to repent with the Lord. We need to return back to the Lord. And we need to cry out to the Lord. Lord, I have an unclean tongue. I have something unclean. Hallelujah. Lord, I want to cleanse by the blood of the Lord Jesus. And touch me, O Lord. Tonight is a touching of God coming over your life. You are going to be healed physically. Also, you are going to heal spiritually tonight. The Lord is there to touch you. You are no more the same again. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to do something hallelujah extraordinary throughout all of our life the lord is going to move in our life hallelujah hallelujah we are living in a such a hallelujah time and we need to revive ourselves hallelujah we need to repent ourselves we need to return back to the lord if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and turn away from their wickedness and then i will hear from heaven and i will forgive their sin and they heal their land. Healing of the land is a revival. So we need to get the revival. Hallelujah. The Lord want to heal this land. We need to humbling ourselves and confess ourselves. Cry before the Lord. Lord, I have the uncleanness in my life. Hallelujah. Forgive me, Lord, by your speech. By by, by I'm, I'm hearing something. And by looking and many ways, I have a wicked, wickedness in my life. Okay, we need to submit before the Lord. We must hear from the Lord first. Then obey, prepare the way for the Lord. This is a time for all of us to prepare the way for the Lord. Yes, we can say, Maranatha, Jesus, come. Hallelujah. Jesus, you come. We are ready. We are preparing the way for you. This is the time for all of us to be and prepare the way for the Lord Jesus to return and the rapture take, uh, should take the place very soon. Hallelujah. You know, when Jesus was appeared in, in the tabor, Jesus took along with him Peter, James, John. When they were on the mountain, there was some presence of God is there. Elijah was there, Moses was there. They were having conference. While they were sitting on the Tabor mountain, and Peter got a wonderful idea, Lord Jesus, better to be sit here. If you go down to the valley, all demand, always they're demanding for healing and food and miracle, so many things. But here, awesome power of God. Can we go and make a three tabernacle, one for you, one for Elijah, Elisa, and one for Moses. We will sleep outside somewhere else. Okay, but awesome power of God. Immediately the voice came out from heaven. Voice came out from heaven. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Hallelujah. When they heard the voice of God, all oh, face down, they just fell down. They couldn't stand in the presence of God. And when the, the voice came out from the cloud, Moses and Elijah, they disappeared. The Bible says when Jesus went and touched them, when they lifted up their head, they could see only Jesus there. Their total idea changed. Tonight is the night to listen our God carefully. If you have many thoughts in your life, you feel I do, yeah, I want to do something, this and that and that. No. Listen carefully. Obey. Prepare the way for the Lord to return back. Hallelujah. He is ready to come very soon. Dear friends, we need to be prepared. Hallelujah. When the rapture come, we should not left over this land. We must go with him. So we need a preparation. Hallelujah. Is any, check out your life. Do I have any wickedness in my life? I'm a worthy person. I'm a holy person. So this is a time you need to cry before the Lord. Get right with the Lord. And uh, as he cry out, I have unclean tongues. 
Prophet Isaiah cried out, I have an unclean tongues. I live among unclean tongues people. And when he confessed, he returned back. The angel of the Lord touched his mouth. And he being a cleansed person. Tonight, we need to be ready for the Lord. Please, just to pray for the land of India. So we are just making the way for the Lord Jesus to come back. And this is a time for Jesus to return. And there is no much years. And he is going to come very soon. Hallelujah. We need to prepare the way for the Lord. And before the rapture, before the second coming, please pray for the nation of India must be saved. India shall be saved. India must be the Christian nation. India must see the power of God. And we need to see the power of God manifesting in the, in the land of India. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight is a night for you. Hallelujah. Repentance and return back to the Lord. Get right. Call Jesus. Maranatha. Come back soon. I am ready. Hallelujah. Be prepared to receive our master is going to come back. Tonight I'm happy to pray that the Lord want to touch many of your life. You are not going to be the same. The Lord is going to deliver you from all the difficult situation. Whatever the physical attack you have. So we are in the battlefield. We are going to be more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So after closing prayer, I love to pray. I just hand over dear pastor. Please come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Direct from heaven, that. Praise God. We'll close up in prayer and... Uh, if you'd like to get delivered, I'm going to have some prayer with my brother. <laughs> and expect change. This man's anointed to bring this message and to deliver the goods. Amen. So um, just come with a humble heart. As he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will heal the land. He's talking about us. You are the land. Amen. He's wanting to conquer you. <laughs> So, Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you for sending your servant to us, fellow Lord, to, to share this message, message of repentance and healing and deliverance. Amen. Washed feet. Mm. The dust being washed off your feet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you are releasing every captive that the enemy has taken and the chains are being broken tonight in Jesus' name. And all the saints said, Amen. God bless you. We're going to have an offering before we go too far. Our offering's going to offer today. And uh, if you want to support his ministry, please, have you got any pamphlets? Did you bring any pamphlets with you? Yep, on the table there. Only three pamphlets, you see. He wasn't expecting a lot of people. <laughs> Please take these pamphlets and just distribute them. Give them out. Because um, God might just put on your heart to give into this ministry. We've known him for 25 years and it's been 25 years of fruitfulness. Amen. A proven life before God, and uh, and we wholly we wholly back this this walk. Father, we give you honour and glory. So, um, if you can't give tonight, I'm sure there's. Have you, sorry, Moffat, have you got something in that pamphlet so people can put money into it? Yeah. If there's something on the pamphlet, okay. Well done. Okay. So um, we want to endorse that. Thank you, Lord. Okay, I think that's it. Praise God. You want some prayer?
Chaban. Damn.